That being true, yes, we should all celebrate my word, not everybody else's word, that there has been so much progress that there are more examples of people inviting in or otherwise mm-hmm. sharing their diverse sexual identity generation expressions and experiences with people. Two. Can I just say for a second that inviting in, I don't know if that's your term or someone else's. Okay. Inviting in is a, um, a, it would it be euphemism or idiom? What's the word? A phrase. A phrase. Uh, a, a phrase. A, a beseechment. Yeah. A beseechment coined by Dr. David Johns that reimagines the phrase coming out of the closet inviting in versus coming and out. And I had to read something you had posted like four times to be like, oh, that's you got what it. he said. <laughs> you got it. And I was like, oh, I like, okay, I get it. I get, and I was yeah. like, you know what? That is so much more attuned with what really is taking place in that moment versus this idea that you are hidden and need to be revealed. It's right. actually, no, this is my space and I'm inviting you into my reality of my identity and not everybody um, deserves even That's right. that access. That's right. And while we're in this footnote, then we'll come back to opting out in schools. Um, one, it's about power because I don't owe you anything right? To where you were. Nope. Um, two, uh, we often think about this when, when we're thinking about sexual identity, but society has something that they tell each of us we should feel shame around, right? So we all have something that we can invite other people into if they demonstrate competence and compassion so we can grow deeper together as humans. Um, and then the last thing is just, I, I hate the way that people suggest that coming out is a singular experience. One, closets are built by straight people and it affirms a heterosexual agenda, uh, but often we navigate every single day whether or not we invite somebody in uh, and that gets diminished when people celebrate coming out in the way that they traditionally do. So to go back to your question, yes, there has been an increase in conversations about LGBTQIA plus issues, if only for the reason that they need to. Prior to this year, it is the fact that um, the Education and Secondary Education Act of America treats children who are assumed to be LGBTQIA plus or who identifies LGBTQIA plus different than their peers. Kids right now in public schools throughout the country don't have the same protections. If they right. identify or assume to be queer, which is most often the case, or if they are. The second thing is that there were some 18 states throughout this country that had what we call no promo homo laws. Where what? I as a teacher, yep, no promo homo laws. This is before this don't say gay stuff. So I as a teacher in Florida could have been fired for having a picture of my partner on my desk. Because the assumption would have been that that picture or my affirmation of my identity, me inviting people in, would have been teaching people that they should be gay. And here's what I think about as a critical thinker. That shit just don't work that way. That math ain't math. And if it did, that would not be queer people. The, literally, nothing in this society has invited queer people into a space that says, it's really easy to do this. Come on over. We are so supportive of this. There's nothing that has done that. And yet, and still. Here we are. Right. And and, and, and and so the, the confluence of... Um, Isn't it crazy yes, when you apply logic, how so many things are undermined? Look, Just, critical thinking. Bell Hooks tells, <laughs> tells us about critical thinking. But because there is an increase in diversity, right? Like, the diversity that exists in our country, I've always celebrated as beautiful in part because of my intersectional identities. But that increase rubs right up against white supremacy, especially yeah. with regard to white folks and the folks who enable them being able to trade their whiteness, the value that it, that it holds in our country, and for political votes or for capital. And so what we're seeing in schools is, or rather, anxieties around these issues, which are complex and weighty and often should be um, contemplated and decided upon between families and the medical providers and experts who know and love them, not by politicians who don't know anything about development, let alone child development, or LGBTQIA plus identities. I think I answered both questions. <laughs> I never know when you're going to stop talking, so I'm never ready. <laughs> like, it'll just end. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I need, I, what's the thing I'm going to say? Done with that. <laughs> 